Hello YouTube, Jeremy here on the One Wild Crafter channel and this video is about uh, basically the productivity of um, running a little trap line for snowshoe hares and it's kind of an addendum to the last video I put out with the wooded beardsman so if you're interested in learning about how to set a snare and you want to watch us setting snares, explaining how to do it um, having a little winter camp out in a hot tent doing some grouse hunting, cooking wild foods then you should go check out that video which I believe is titled Overnight Hot Tent Hunting and Trapping um, and that's the video where you'll see us setting the snares in this video um, I'm revisiting the snares that we set and looking at how that trap line um, produces over time. So here's just a quick recap of the last video. Um, Chris and I came out, set up a hot tent, we snowshoed around, set snares in a whole bunch of really likely spots based on the hair trails that were there. And we only caught one snowshoe hare. Um, we actually caught two, but a red fox stole one from us by pulling the hair and snapping the wire. Um, and so you might think that's not a very efficient way of uh, capturing food. So in this video, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about you know your productivity over time because <clears throat> for the last few weeks I've been setting only four snares off and on checking them every day and I've caught eight hares and uh, Chris and I had 20 snares set up and we only caught two um, so what I'm going to do for the next couple of days is go out and check these snares. That's all there is to it. It's like an efficiency measure. Also, Chris wanted some updates on how some of the snares performed after we uh, modified them a bit. So there's I'm going to throw in the few shots they might not mean a lot to you um, but Chris is going to be watching intently and he's going to be wondering if the way that he changed these snares up made a difference in their success rate. I'm at the first snare and I'll show you what happened. So previously this was a very open snare and what Chris did is he put in all these little pieces of dead conifer and what happened is he wanted to disguise the fact that there was a snare here and a hair has gone through and and was not was not caught um, but it was fooled at least enough into still jumping through that spot there so I'm going to reset this snare and hopefully we catch it on the next run through so here's one where we also fenced it off a little bit more um, but a hair has not run through the snare there because what was happening is they were deking around to the left so one thing you notice after you've trapped a spot more than a day or two is that certain trails will get discontinued and new trails will be made or smaller trails will become more packed and so over time you kind of realize maybe where there's better spots to set your snares so case in point uh, I just checked three snares on this trail here none of them were tripped uh, the one the trail didn't seem to be used anymore so I just pulled my snare up and moved it onto a better path so one of the things that I like to do is I like to cut a, a relatively long stick have my snare on that and then to move it all I have to do is pull that whole stick out and you can usually just kind of shove it in the snow or 
um, prop it up on some other trees and branches and move it pretty easily so that's what I did here and I also set up one of these Browning Black Ops game cameras here so it's watching this snare and hopefully I'll be able to get some good footage about how the hares behave as they're approaching that snare or uh, maybe get some footage of one getting caught and from day to day maybe I'll move this camera from trail to trail and see what kind of footage I can get. So this is basically day two. Day one was in the video that the Wooded Beardsman and I already filmed and this is day two of a snaring efficiency trial. Okay here's snare number nine and this is one where Chris set up um, kind of a little barrier to uh, funnel the hairs along because they were using a couple different paths and he wanted them to focus on the one path and did that work out? Yes it did! One hair for nine snares so far. Okay here's another fence and a funnel. Um, but this one here it looks like maybe a hair deked around to the right side of it this time. Um, none followed the old trail. That's number 10. So here's a spot where I had a stick lying across with a little snare hanging down and there's the hair. So now now we've got two hairs out of 11 snares. So I just reset that snare on the opposite side of the trail this time. Just a plain set and we'll see how that works out. I like to mark some of my spots with a flag and cape so I don't lose track of them. So this is a pretty good trail but it did not catch a hare this time although it looks possible that one jumped around to the left. Um, so what we do for that is we find a dead dead stick and just kind of block it a little bit just to encourage them to go through the middle. Whoa. So either my parents dog followed the trail all the way up here at some point or a wolf has been on our trail. Uh -huh. And when I look at these tracks a little bit closer, it looks like it was walking towards me and then running from me. So I wonder if it was just here and it heard me talking to myself or what. Anyhow, there's another snare there, untouched. I'm going to say that there might be more than one wolf dog track here. And look what happened over here. This is my 15th snare untouched. Um, but whatever was here went running up in that deeper snow too. And there's more of those wolf dog tracks and there's a bunch of rabbit fur there. So one got eaten. I wonder if it got pulled out of my snares. I have I have another snare just up ahead. Nope. My snare is untouched. You won't be able to see it but it's back in there. But this is a really well traveled trail so I'm going to just leave that snare where it is because it's right in the perfect spot. And here's the last snare and it's been tripped. So I'm going to reset that one since it's on an active trail and that's it for day two. So day two we're looking at uh, 18 snares I think and two hairs caught. A couple traps or a couple snares tripped. Um, so it's running not great odds but not bad and I'll keep checking in. I don't know how many days I'll do this for but uh, couple more anyway and give you an idea about the efficiency of running a snare line over a few days. I'm not really sure yet if that was my dog or not leaving those big tracks um, but have a look at this this is interesting. In these tracks here 
See the blood speckles? Those red dots? And... I see one down there. There's a one here. Blood. Oh, no blood in these ones. They just kind of run off in the woods here and then uh, and this is a fox track over here so that's a different critter and up ahead here we got some hair hair tracks and fox tracks again so I don't know what that is is that my dog, my parents' dog, or a wolf with a bleeding paw, because it's kind of dripping blood. Or is it a wolf or a dog running around with a hair in its mouth, licking the blood off of its chops? I'm just not really sure. And. Maybe we'll never know. We'll see if there are fresh tracks when we come out for the day three check-in tomorrow. All right, day three on the trap line, snaring hares. I was trying to remember how many snares I have out. I think it's 17. We'll count them as we go and see what our success rate is today. So we had Two the first day, two the second day. See if it's any different today. We uh, touched a couple snares up yesterday, moved one or two around, reset the ones that had caught hairs, and today's another day. So we'll go through and have a look. Um, if you're just watching this video to learn about snaring hares, because you're snaring and eating hares, you might be interested to know that this is my 340th day of eating wild food. My big wild year with my girlfriend Delphine, and we're just eating wild food all year and documenting that process. Hey, have a look at our first trap here. Number one, bun bun. Number two, just a plain snare. Number three, with all the brush funneling them in, no hair. So this is the first little side trail and there are three snares set down here. This part of my Trap line is on a separate property at my parents' place, nearby to my place. Snare number four. Number five, and the trail's not getting used anymore, so I'm gonna move that one. Oh, look at this. This is the one that had the camera set up on it. So there's gonna be some footage. That's the one that I just moved yesterday. Number eight, and they're not using that path anymore, so I'm gonna move that one. Number nine, I'm gonna give that one one more day and then I might move it. Number 10 got bumped, and it looks like the whole stick got flipped. Well, maybe it just fell down from where it was. So, yeah. set that back up. Great, better. Number 
11 is missing. There was a crossbar here. I'm sure I didn't move that one. No, because remember, one deked around, so I added this. So there was a crossbar here. Rabbit got caught. So now we just have to look around because it could not have gone far dragging a crossbar. So just give me a minute. So see all the there's scats here, it's all thumped down and you can see the line where the sticks that crossbar has been bounced around. So here we are. Not too far off. So that hair only traveled about eight yards from where the snare was set, but that one did not work as humanely as it should have. And I'll have to use a bigger bigger crossbar next time. Number 12. I'm going to give that one one more day and then I'll move it. 13 still looks good over there. Okay, number 14 should be right here. This is where that dog wolf track ran up on the right. I had a snare on the left. I don't think I moved it. But I see some thumpity thump thump tracks here and maybe some stick drag marks. So, that's Follow. Oh, I'm gonna have to dispatch that one. And that happens sometimes too. The snares are not 100% effective. So it's good to bring a 22 or an axe or a thumping stick with you because you might have to dispatch an animal. And that's what I'll do with that one. Snow in my boot there. Um, so. I uh, didn't notice until I picked that rabbit up or that hair up. But um, that was the first snare that I set with the snaring wire that I got as a gift from my son for uh, Christmas last year because it was the big wild year and I asked him for some snaring wire and um, that's what he got me. So I'm glad that I was able to put that gift to use and catch some wild food for this big wild deer adventure. And that was number 14, so a few more snares to check. There's another one that I have to dispatch. It's bad odds today. Number 16 is in here. Nothing on it, but the trail still looks good, so we'll leave it for now. There's the last one over there. Number 17. I'm going to leave it set up for now, although it looks like the hares might have been using a path around it. So the total for day three is five hares, 17 snares. Um, tomorrow I'll check again. I'll only have 16. Uh, I pulled one snare. Maybe I pulled two. I'll have 15 or 16 snares tomorrow. Um, and interestingly, I had to dispatch two hares, and coincidentally, both of them were using that heavier gauge of stainless snaring wire. And uh, I can't recall that I've ever had one that I had to dispatch using that smaller gauge of brass wire. Although I certainly have had them snap the wire. So there might be a trade-off there. The stiffer wire might not be kind of supple enough to make a tight noose when they're pulling against it. And the brass wire seems to do that. So some things to keep in mind. And I'll check in tomorrow for day four. And just a quick update after Chris had to leave but we ran, uh, left the snares up for a couple more days and I've been collecting each day for the next two days. And there are eight more hares. 
These are really well kept. You catch them on all different days. Mm. Some of them I caught yesterday. Mm, so they're quite fresh. So one <laughs> is from two days ago, two are from yesterday, and five are from today. Five? Yep. You caught ten? Uh, one ten. plus two plus five. A one plus two. Now what? Now, both if you knees are do, bare. Yeah, you can pull them apart a little bit. Ooh, now wouldn't that look, hurt? Well, no, if it was dead. alive, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if making weird noises is going to help you at all. How do people learn how to do these things? Well, if they're lucky, they've got a parent <sighs> or a grandparent that can teach them. No, but like from the first time someone caught a rabbit. From the first time somebody caught a rabbit, they probably had a bite and were like, hmm, I don't like the hairy part. And then they peeled it off. That's where the femur attaches onto the hip. Ow, just like, just like you. Oh, here. <laughs> So that's all the eating and that's all the go? Yep. And I think what we're going to do with these guts, we'll save them all up. And then I'll make you guys a gut soup one day. Make the bears a gut soup. Yeah, I'm actually going to make a bait for a fox or a wolf because... <laughs> that looks so funny. Why not their fur? Oh, this is a head. head. Yeah. Ooh, is that the um the apple thing? The Adam's apple? Yeah. No, that's the sternum. That's where the ribs are coming together, just like on you. Oh, ah, that get close. Can just move this one over here. So What's can... that big one? That's the stomach. It looks like a croissant. <laughs> it does. The stomach looks like a croissant. Imagine you bake that. And you're like, I made you a tiny mini Ooh. special croissant. And who would you give it to to eat? Probably my enemy. Huh. Didn't know he had an enemy. Oh, yeah. Those are some very nice hearts. Oh, thanks. Done! Yes. Look! I read this book and they had found a mummy that was like thousands of years old. Yep. And it had a wooden knife with like um oh. like it was so old that they were wearing like fur clothes. They had like um a wooden handled knife with like a stone on the end. They had a really like cool um axe. Yep. They took the mummy to a place. Um and it, like I I covered up the pictures because it was like a brown skeleton and yep. ice. Buried and people were chopping at it. Cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Okay. Daddy! Yep. I removed a back paw. Already? With you. Maybe you're just a natural. I'm so good at it. Maybe I can get you to just do the rest of them for me. I would like that, but. Like it, but you can't. I can't. Why not? It's my bedtime. Oh, is it? You're gonna make yourself go to bed on time for once? No. Just to avoid being a helpful hair skinner for me. Are you still hanging in there? Day four of the hair snaring uh, updates. So we had a big change in uh, weather. Yesterday it was minus 4 degrees Celsius and last night it dropped down to minus 20 degrees Celsius which is maybe minus 10 Fahrenheit. Pretty cold weather. Now the old timers say that that is the weather that makes rabbits run. And uh, I don't know if I've been snaring enough rabbits to know if that's true or not but I'll be interested to see if we catch more today or not and also 
been thinking about whether our increased efficiency is from um, just the hairs, the snares being out longer, or the fact that checking them every day over a period of days lets you tweak them and move them, and that that is what really increases your chances of catching hares. So I'm just on the first trail here. Let's see what we're after. I see lots of fresh tracks. So there was definitely activity last night. Fingers crossed. I would say this is probably a fisher track. Hopping along over here and over by the spring. Hopefully you didn't pull any hairs out of my snares. If I have any. I know not everybody's going to watch to the end to find out how this turns out, but uh, I'm going to be cheeky and give you a, a mid-video reminder that if you like what you're watching, you may or may not watch it through to the end, but if you like it and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to know when new content's coming out, turn on the notifications. Oh, you almost saw me get a twig in the eyeball. Bonus footage. Turn on coming up on the first snare oh yeah this is the one that caught one yesterday and I let it flip up I didn't really reset it um, but there are fresh tracks on the trail so I'm gonna consider setting that one again or maybe I'll just let it rest for a while longer here's number two this was a pretty good trail but didn't get any activity last night so I'm going to move this one Oh, what is this? Something pooped out some. I would say that those are mountain ash berries. And there's a track there. I'm going to say that that is a fisher track. Based on the size and the gait pattern. A berry eating fisher. And this one didn't catch anything. And the trail's not used. So that's one that I said I was going to move. And so today's the day to move it. I can also tell on this little short walk that um, these gloves are not going to keep me warm on the longer hike. Uh, it's going to be hard to manage the camera. So what I might do is count and check all the snares and I'll just do a quick clip with an update of how many I caught or if there's any super exciting footage I'll make the effort to pull the camera out but it's cold. I brought my mitts but I forgot them in the car so I just have my gloves and I guess I'm going to just have cold hands and keep on filming and updating so I'll set our first couple of snares. I set the camera up here and it looks like it looks like no hairs went on this path last night and none over there so that's two of the snares empty oh, but over here bingo first one out of five Number six, there's number seven, and that's one that we just moved there yesterday. We'll give it another couple days. Number eight, and it's not really on an active trail anymore, it looks like, but I'm just going to leave it for now. So this was number nine, you can see it's missing, um, and but just about eight feet away. You can see that hair did not get very far on that snare pole. So that is the third hair that we've caught on this trail. So once on that side, twice on that side maybe, once on this side. So it's a pretty good spot. And that is 
Snare number nine. Two hairs, nine snares. Number ten here. I was sure this one was going to catch a hair. Uh, but no hairs used the trail last night, it looks like. Number ten. Number eleven. Just going to readjust it here a little bit. Nothing there. Twelve. Empty. Thirteen. 14 is back over there, empty, and 15, and that trail doesn't really seem to be getting any use now either. So the day four summary, 15 snares, two hares. Not so bad. Um, I'm gonna run this one more day for sure. So if you're interested, keep following along. We'll see what our catch is tomorrow. Day five. I'm gonna pull the snares today. Five days seems like a good length of time. And I wanna give them a rest. It's just, uh, what is it, six days till Christmas, I think. And after Christmas, I believe that Chris, the Wooded Beardsman and I have a plan to do another run of hair snaring um, with the game camera set up for some extra footage and try our success there. So, um, this is going to be the last day. So I got a few snares to check over here. Oh, there's one. I knew there was one nearby. Nothing in that one. And I was also planning on pulling all those um, steel wire snares anyway. I, so there, I caught two hairs on the steel wire, neither one died, and in talking with someone who used the steel wire a fair bit, they said they run about 50-50, where half the snares kill the hairs and half of them don't, and that's, that's just not good enough odds. Um, I'm not convinced that it's the right gauge either, so I'm going to permanently switch to uh, just the brass wire. It was minus 30 degrees Celsius last night. Um, I do see lots of fresh hair tracks around. That is some cold weather. Minus 30. If I was a hare, I don't know if I'd be out running around to keep warm or if I would just bury myself uh, in the deepest, warmest place I could find. Even at uh, minus 30 though, the spring just flows all year round, never freezes. Nothing on this one. Alright, this is my first side trip And we got the camera set up here. No hair on that floor. And no hair back there, so... Uh, no snares here, and this is the one that I pulled the other day. It's just here, and I'm going to pull these other two and just leave them here for next week. See how easy that is when you've got them on uh, just a loose pole. One, two. Three. Gonna get a rest for a week. And then Chris and I are gonna come back out and set more snares. I think here. Or maybe somewhere else. So I might have to come back and pick these all up later. And then take the camera down. So this is the twelfth snare and it's been bumped, which is the only action I've seen so far on the snares on day five. And uh, there's the last one there, number 14. So today, day five, grand total, zero hairs, 14 snares. So let's have a look at what that totals up to over five days 
for the number of snares over the number of days and the number of hairs caught.